Get ready for your daily dose of marketing strategies and tactics from entrepreneurs with the guile and experience to help you find success in any marketing capacity. You're listening to Marketing School with your instructors, Neil Patel and Eric Sue. Welcome to another episode of Marketing School. I'm Eric Sue, And I'm Neil Patel. And today we are going to talk about how to ramp up content production. So this is going to be a fun topic because this is what Neil and I basically, we create a lot of content. I mean, you, you know, with Neil's stuff, I mean, he's basically everywhere. And I get a lot of comments from people all the time, like, how do you pr- produce so much content? You're everywhere. Um, and, you know, the first thing I can share around content production, or maybe even it's helpful to say, like, why we're doing it. I think for both Neil and I, the way we, you know, at least for me, the way I get business is, you know, I just produce a lot of value out there and then people come and then we build relationships and I like producing content because it's building relationships at scale like you listening to this right now both listening to my voice and Neil's voice you know you're 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 kind of getting to know us better you're getting to know our personality right so I like doing it that way um so what I can say is when it comes to wrapping content production for example uh one tip I have for you like this podcast is a daily podcast and I batch all these episodes with Neil like for example we're sitting in the studio right now in LA and we're going to crank out 20 episodes today and then 20 episodes tomorrow today's a Saturday and a Sunday um so you know we batch things that way it just makes it easier because if we had to record every single day it just wouldn't work out because Neil's traveling I'm traveling as well um so you know my number one tip if you're trying to wrap up content production first one at least is uh just to batch another thing to do is just hire a shitload of writers go to jobs.problogger.net post ads there hire a ton of writers you can is paying two to three hundred dollars per post you can streamline it it works really well the key with increasing content production is to set a rubric a guideline on what people need to do what they shouldn't be doing the tone of voice how to structure the paragraphs the headings as long as you do that you'll be fine uh, and the way my posts are structured if you want to copy them is introduction conclusion body in the middle bodies broken down by subheadings subheadings typically have keywords uh, the title of the post the way I get ideas for post topics is I go to BuzzSumo, I put in keywords in my industry, it'll tell me what's worked in the past, and then I go to Ahrefs, put in competitor URLs, it shows me what's driving all their search traffic. Between those two, I now have ideas, I come up with my own variations of their posts and make better versions of it, more thorough, more detailed, with better updated information. If I'm using anything from their posts, I of course link back, cite them, get permission. But um, yeah, that's how you streamline content production. Yeah, the other thing I'll add is around repurposing content. So the those of you in the past might have heard me give an example on what kind of Shaleen Johnson does. And you can see Gary Vee doing this as well. So what Shaleen Johnson does, and she's a uh, she's a personality that, you know, she sells um, like Instagram courses, things like that. So what she does is she'll, I don't know if she does this anymore, but she'll start with a little Facebook live video and then she'll just kind of riff on things, right? Just start to talk about things. Different topics just kind of pop up. People ask about things. It's almost like a QA. and a And then those topics will become separate blog posts. Um, even some of those can become webinars uh, on their own and you know they can become social images too and you can see from just one piece of content one facebook live it's become multiple multiple pieces of content right same thing with gary v he does a video it become a blog post it might become a linkedin post as well and it just starts to splinter off into all these other things um if you're spending the time creating something like this or a piece of content you know why shouldn't you take it to um to as far as it can go right Th- same thing when you buy a car you're not going to just drive it once you know you should be taking it as far as it can go and, you know, looking at these podcasts that I do with Neil, you know, I am trying to figure out ways for us to repurpose all this stuff now uh, for it to grow even more. And just to give you an example, like the show notes that we publish, those are popping up automatically uh, on markingschool.io. Um, and, you know, that's one way of kind of repurposing stuff, right? Or, you know, publishing it to different channels. Yeah. So if you're trying to streamline your content production and write more of it, as Eric mentioned, you can repurpose, you can go and create more, which I talked about. Um you can also try different formats of content, video, audio. Like if you think about what we're doing with marketing school, we blogged about a lot of this stuff. We gave speeches about it. I've even created videos, Eric has as well, but it's just creating similar types of piece of content in different formats for different user types, right? Some people prefer audios, others prefer content that's text-based or others may even prefer video. Great, so I mean, we could just talk about this forever. I mean, um, but the, the, the tips we gave you, if you just execute on one of them right now, it's gonna help you quite a bit. I can tell you, um, yeah, I mean, batching has helped us a lot and just also staying really consistent. I mean, Neil and I really committed to 
into this stuff. If you're not consistent with your content, your content production, then, you know, at the end of the day, it's just going to fall off. So, you know, podcasts that we've done, you know, we've been consistent with it, both this one and then the, the other one that I've that I've done. So um, anyway, I mean, we could probably do like part two of this episode and part three down the road. But that's it for today. And before we go, we have a uh, giveaway for you. This is a one year annual subscription to Crazy Egg. Uh, and I'm going to let Neil explain what that is before I give you the link. So Crazy Egg is a visual analytics tool, shows you where people click, where they don't, shows you if your form fields or call to action buttons are too low or too high. It even allows you to make changes to your site using a WYSIWYG editor so you don't have to be a designer or developer. These are all marketing changes and you can even run A-B tests to maximize your sales and conversion. Great. So if you want to get access to this giveaway, you can actually get multiple entries. And if you want to find out more, just go to singlegrain.com slash giveaway and you'll learn more about it. And we're actually giving away one of these every single week. So think of it as a 52 week giveaway. So again, singlegrain.com slash giveaway and we will see you tomorrow. This session of Marketing School has come to a close. Be sure to subscribe for more daily marketing strategies and tactics to help you find the success you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best daily content possible. We'll see you in class tomorrow right here on Marketing School.